I paid $2,500 for these broken laptops, and now it's time to see if I can fix them. This Razer laptop was worth over $3,000 when it was new, so we'll save that one for last and start with this Razer laptop. Let's open it up, see if it turns on, and see what's all wrong. This video is sponsored by the Ridge Wallet. More on them in a minute. So let's see what happens when we press the power button. Oh, we do have a green light. That's, well, it did, oh yeah, there it is. Okay. Got something on the screen, that's good news. Windows could not complete the installation. To install Windows on this computer, restart the installation. I think this would be a great time for me to mention that I have very little experience with software. I'm more of a hardware guy myself, so this should get interesting. Oh, wait, here we go. Uh, we got an error code. That's actually good, that gives me something to go off of, so you'll need to use recovery tools. So before I take the back off of this thing, I'm gonna get a USB stick with Windows on it and try and install Windows that way. Okay, let's see if this works. I have no idea if I did all that right, but it is installing, it looks like. So I'm just gonna let this install and we'll see what happens. I am 100% sure there's a better way to do this, but what I'm doing is at least working. Okay, so this is the first problem I see since I've reinstalled Windows. It doesn't show any networks here. So I'm gonna keep going and hopefully we'll be able to figure that out along the way. And here we go, good so far. Okay, let's check out this internet problem. Yeah, it doesn't even see internet. Okay, did not detect a properly installed network adapter. Let's see if it thinks there's any network adapters. Okay, it thinks all of this is here. Also has a Bluetooth problem here, which is interesting. Oh, here we go. Let's do a network reset. Nope. And now we're reinstalling Windows yet again. This time it seems like it's actually taking a little bit longer, so I'm hopeful that maybe it's installing everything that it needs. It is also possible that there's just a problem with the hardware on this. I'm hoping that's the problem because I really want to open this thing up. And here we go, it just found my network. This is great news. Okay, and this all looks great. We are connected to the internet and I don't see any other problems with this. I will test this a little bit more off camera, but it looks like this Razer is fully fixed. Let's move on to this HP Spectre 360. I'm not sure how to turn this on. Oh, there we go. Got something on the screen. Now this one I've already got, shut up. So this one I've already got set up. I wanted to save some time in the video by making sure Windows was all pre-installed. So the one thing I wanted to check on this is the charging system. We get 19.7 volts and 1.29 amps, which is great. Now it's fully powered off. Let's see if it charges now. Okay, and it does charge now. So the reason I sound a little surprised is I did try and charge all of these laptops up before the video started, just so then I didn't have to do that in the video. And this one wasn't charging when it was turned off. Clearly now it is. I'm thinking the battery was just fully charged when I tried to do that test. So now I need to test and see if there's anything else I noticed that is wrong with this one. After this is fully updated, I'm gonna test it more off camera and I'll come back to it if I find anything interesting. Let's move on to one of the larger laptops, this Acer Nitro 5. I know for sure there's something wrong with this one, so let's check it out. But before we do that, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, the Ridge Wallet. The Ridge Wallet has over 30 colors and styles, including carbon fiber and burnt titanium. These wallets are so high quality that there's over 40,000 five-star reviews. Views. And even better, you can test drive them for free for 45 days. If you don't like it after 45 days, you can return it for a full refund. This wallet is one of my new favorites that Ridge sells, and it's a topographic map of Half Dome. Another thing I love about Ridge is they sell upgrade kits for any wallet available right on their website. And speaking of their website, you can go to my link in the description, ridge.com slash tronicsfix, and use code tronicsfix for 10% off your order. Now is a great time to get a Ridge wallet for you or as a gift for someone else. Now let's get to this Acer Nitro 5 and see if we can figure out what's wrong. We do have power, that's good news. Now I've actually already checked this computer and I'll show you what the problem is. So if I'm going to enter a password and I go to press the T key, nothing happens. Y works. U does not work. I works. O works. P does not work. So we've got a problem with the keyboard. I'm pretty sure the only thing that could be going on is something internally. So I think we finally have a laptop that we need to take apart. Okay, any sign of liquid damage? Now I've just been looking at the board a little bit closer and I think I might have found the issue. So look closely at everything you can see and see if you can spot what I spotted. If you look very closely, this is the ribbon cable for the keyboard. 
This tab is locked fully in. This tab, however, is not. That means that the connection between this ribbon cable and these pins that go to the board is probably not very good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just push the cable in, lock this tab fully. There we go. Make sure both of them are fully pushed down. And now let's see if that keyboard works. Okay, and this is the test. Does the T work? Oh no, it still doesn't work. I thought for sure that was gonna fix it. Okay, well, back to the drawing board on this one. Now, as I'm looking at this area again, I noticed a very similar thing right here on this connection right here. This locking tab is also not locked. I'm actually gonna unlock this, reseat the cable, and then make sure it is fully locked. To do that, I'm gonna need to remove this battery so I can get to this ribbon cable right here. And then I'm also gonna reseat this one as well. You see this white line right here? Usually that should be a little closer to this connector. So well, let's try those things and then see if that'll work. Okay, now we can push this cable all the way in. There we go. That one is all the way in now and fully seated. Now let's do the same with this one. Okay, so that white line is actually where it needs to be. You can feel when this ribbon cable kind of bottoms out in the connector. So that locking tab is fully down, so we should be good there. Okay, so what do you think? You think that'll fix it? Let's find out. Come on, work. Oh, no. I was hoping that was gonna be a quick, easy fix, but clearly it's not gonna be. and I see absolutely no liquid damage at all on the bottom side of this board and no evidence of liquid damage right here on the bottom side of the keyboard either. So back in with the motherboard. So I actually just went ahead and reinstalled Windows just to make sure that there wasn't a problem with the installation or anything like that. So now let's check and see if we have these buttons working. Let's start with T, come on. No. So I think at this point, we just need to buy a new keyboard. I think it's probably the keyboard. I've tried everything I know to do software wise. So I think really the only thing that's left is the keyboard itself. Now I don't have that part here yet. So let's move on to the Lenovo laptop. Once I get the part, then we'll come back to this one. And here we have a Lenovo Yoga C740. Let's see if it turns on. If I know how to turn it on. Oh, button on the side. Okay, no power at all on this one. Let's plug it into a charger and see what happens. We've got 19 volts and 0 0.85, 0 0.88 amps. Now let's try and power it on. We've got a flashing power button. Oh, here we go. And it's charging at 1.48 amps. Now I actually tested this one before I started the video and the power button would come on, but then it would just power right back off. So this is actually great news. It does seem to be staying on. So let's get Windows installed and see what happens. Now, as I'm looking at this one, I see a dent here and a dent right on the other side as well. So it is possible that the reason this one is put in the salvage box that I bought is because of these dents. Also, similar thing right up here on the top case and right over here. So this one might actually work fine and it could be just because there's dents here. So far, absolutely no problems other than those dents on the case that I've shown already. And after getting this Lenovo Yoga all set up, and doing some basic tests on it, I see no problems. I'll test it a little bit more off camera, but for now, I'm gonna consider this one as one that didn't really need anything fixed. I think the dents on the case are the reason this was in with the salvage box. So I think now it's time to move over to the 17 inch razor. Now, before we get doing anything too crazy on this one, I wanna remove this bottom cover because it is missing two screws here, none over here, this one's loose but all the rest look like they're here, but it's missing these ones. So I wanna just open this up and make sure all the parts are there and there are no obvious problems. And let's face it, I mean, I do just wanna open it up too. Okay, and let's see what it looks like on the inside. Wow, that is very dirty. Look at that. I mean, these heat sinks gotta be just totally plugged under here. Other than that, the good news is I don't see any liquid damage or any other issues except for here is one of the screws. It's a good thing I took this bottom case off. The screw rattling around here could have touched some points and caused some major issues. Let's see if there are any more in here. Oh, got another one. Okay, I think, and I hope we got them all. 
Now let's get this cleaning done. Wow, look at this. This is insane. I've done very few laptop repairs, but this is definitely the most plugged laptop heat sink I've ever seen. No wonder this thing was considered salvage. Look at that. Let's check the other one. Yep, look at that. There's no question this laptop had a serious overheating issue. I actually wanna make sure this all gets cleaned out. That's the keyboard right under there. So I gotta make sure that none of this gets stuck down in there, even though it looks like it already is. So it wouldn't surprise me if this one is also having a keyboard issue. It's okay. Everything's gonna be okay. So all of this came out of just those two heat sinks. I bet you're gonna go clean your laptop after this video. So for any of you wondering where I got this lot of computers, I bought it from a website that sells liquidation goods from major retailers. And guess what I just found? Yep, another screw. Got some dust right there. Dust down here. Also have quite a bit of dust right here, so we do need to give this a good cleaning. And then we need to replace this thermal paste. And we can get that heat sink back on, the rest of it fully cleaned. Then we can put the motherboard in and see if it actually works. I think you know what time it is. It's time to install the perfect amount of thermal paste because we know that's the real problem here. And there we go. Now we can put it all back together and with the perfect amount of thermal paste, we can be sure that it's gonna start right up. So if you look closely here, you can even see this dust and lint and hair all the way on the top side of the keyboard just because it was so packed with dirt in there. Okay, there's definitely more I could do, but I wanna try and get this thing started up. I can do that later. Oh, I see, oh yeah, here we go. Good, good. Account has been disabled. I have no mouse. Okay, so that's gonna be the next thing we have to figure out. Oh, we do have a touch display, that's cool. Let's go ahead and try a restart. Hey, it actually let me in. Okay. So since this seems to have an administrator password, I think what I wanna do since we actually are in is try and just reinstall Windows into this laptop. But right now, this mouse isn't working. So I gotta look at that first and then let's just reinstall Windows and see if we can get a fresh install on this thing. And that was pretty easy to find the problem with the mouse. At least I'm assuming that's what it is. Now I have Windows fully installed. The mouse is working now that it's plugged in and it's running at a cool 46 degrees Celsius when it's just here at idle. So this Razer laptop is fixed, but we gotta go back to that Lenovo we looked at earlier because I just noticed another problem. So before when I had this plugged in, it seemed to be charging and working perfectly normally. Then I pulled the charger out and put it back in and this is what happens. We just get a flash on the charger and that's it. So I'm gonna first try and turn it on and let's see if that changes. Okay, so this all looks good, but we only have 30% on the battery. So let's try and plug this in now that it is started up. We get the same thing. So I think that's justification enough to open it up. Let's get this back off and see what it looks like on the inside. And with that back cover off, the first thing I notice is, I mean, first of all, this humongous lithium ion battery, but second of all, I see no liquid damage or any other sort of damage on this computer. So the first thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the battery and then I'll just reconnect it and try and charge it again and see if that changes anything. Let's see what happens when we try and plug it in without the battery plugged in. Okay. It actually is charging normally without the battery. See what happens when we plug the battery back in. Could just have a faulty battery here. Okay, so the battery is the first thing I suspect. There's gotta be some sort of charge controller that determines whether it's using AC power or battery power. And I'm wondering if that could possibly be faulty. It's also strange how it worked fine for a while, and then after I unplugged it and plugged it back in, then it stopped working again. Let's check the battery driver. There we go, batteries. This device is working properly. Let's try and update the driver. Now I will re-enable it. 
Now let's see if that will get our charger to work. And same thing. So at this point, I don't think we have a software issue. I think it's probably gotta be a hardware issue with the battery, but I don't know of any good way to test that. So next I'm gonna look up and see if I can figure out where on this board the battery charger controller is and see if we can do any basic tests on that, at least see if there is any shorts on it or anything. I'm also gonna look over this with a thermal camera and just see if there's anything that's getting super hot. Okay, now with that set up, let's plug it in and see what happens. Let's see. There's a significant warm spot there. So 107, which is pretty warm. It's kind of right under these connectors right here. So let's take this network card off and check all these little components around here and see if we can figure out what exactly is causing it to heat up like that. It's not like it's super hot, but it is warm enough that it kind of makes me wonder if there's anything going on there. So we possibly have a problem right down here in one of these little guys. It also could be something coming from the other side of the board. I'm gonna get in and check some of these little components right here and see if we have any obvious shorts. The other thing I notice is it looks like somebody has had this board out. It looks like there used to be some sort of warranty sticker here and that screw has also been tampered with, it looks like. Same with this one. So now I was just inspecting this USB-C charge port and I noticed what looks like a little problem right here. So you can see part of the uh, circuit right here. This, this line goes back here but it doesn't actually connect right here onto this pin. So I'm wondering if maybe that's the only issue we have here. I think the first thing we need to do is solder a wire from here onto this trace somewhere, and then we'll see if that'll work. Okay, and now that that's fixed, let's give it a test and see what it does. Now we have the battery plugged in. We have this little circuit fixed. Let's see what happens. Come on. Ah, oh, no. This little component right here could be causing a problem, but it also could be something on the other side of this board. So I think what I wanna do is just get this board out so I can check the other side of the board and just make sure there's nothing obvious going on there. And this just shows that obviously someone's already been in here trying to fix this board as this chip has fresh new thermal paste, even though they didn't clean off all the old thermal paste. And there we go. Oh yeah, somebody's been into this one. This bottom metal piece has creases all over. It's all kinked up over here. Let's see what we're getting ourselves into. Actually doesn't look too bad. So there's really not much going on on the back side of this board. There's these little components over here. I already checked those and those are all fine. So we go back to this guy right here. So let's check this one out and just see if there's anything obvious going on on it. Now in the process of looking at this little LJ component, I found something very interesting. I found the controller and it is this guy right here. And I noticed that it has some very interesting solder joints. If you look right along the solder joints, you can see a lot of them aren't even connected to the pads. So what I'm gonna do to fix this is just put some flux on all these pads and then bring my small micro pencil soldering iron along here, touch up all these pads to make sure they're in good connection between the chip and the board. Now we have all these pens correctly aligned and soldered on. If you notice, these two pens have a bridge. That doesn't matter because they're both connected to this same pad. Now that's all clean. We do have one other issue to worry about and that is this little chip right here. This is the one that gets warm. It doesn't get like super warm, but it definitely gets way hotter than anything around it. So since I can't find this chip anywhere, there's only two markings on it and I don't know where to find it. Since there is another one of these chips right here, First, what I'm gonna do is remove this chip, see if it charges, and then if it does not charge, then I'm gonna take the other chip from the other port and put it on right up here. Let's plug it into the charger and see if that happened to fix it. Come on. Ah, uh, no. Let's plug it in and see if it charges. No, doing the same thing as before. So I was able to find the data sheet for the USB-C controller. So let's do a little bit of testing here. I wanna see if we have AC power in, and then I also wanna see if, if this controller is making the power for the rest of the board, like this 3v3 right here and this 3v3 right here. So the first thing we need to check is to see if we have AC power in. So that is pin number six and pin number 10. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. 
2.9 volts, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 2.9 volts. As far as I know, that's accurate. I don't have a number for AC in. Let's check number five, which is a 3V3 out. One, two, three, four, five. 3.3 volts, and number nine, six, seven, eight, nine, and 3.3 volts. Let's just go ahead and check the V bus on 13 and 14. And there we have 20 volts. So based on that testing, this chip, unless there's something I'm missing, this chip seems to be doing its job. It's taking voltage in and putting voltage out on the correct pins. And after looking at the numbers on this chip, this is our charge controller. And this is the pin out for anyone that's interested. And with our black probe on ground, let's check for a VBUS 19.9. Let's check for input voltage 19.9 and 19.9. So by checking this charge controller, I've learned that it does get voltage from the USB-C port when you have the USB-C cable plugged in. It also does see the battery and the battery voltage when it's plugged in. Now, the hard part is that I don't have a schematic for the rest of this board. So I can test the few pins that I know to test on this chip, but without a schematic telling me where the other components are that I need to be testing that are in line with this charge circuit, there's just really not much more I can do, unfortunately. So then I asked myself the question, should I replace the battery on this? I did look up on eBay and I can get a used battery just like this for 15 bucks, so I'm gonna get that. I don't like to just buy parts and throw parts at something, but in this case, I don't have a lot of other options because I can only test so many things without a full schematic. I really hope this works after all that stuff I've done to the motherboard, all the testing we've done. Unfortunately, we're kind of up against a wall since we have no schematics. Let's plug it in and see what happens. Oh, same thing. Oh, look at this. It's actually charging now. So I unplugged the battery and then just plugged it in when it was on, and now it's charging. That is weird. While I let this one charge, let's get back to that Acer Nitro 5. The keyboard has come in, so let's get that replaced and see if that fixes that one. So I'm just gonna start pressing from over here and just go all the way across and... Every single key works just fine. So this Acer Nitro 5 is totally fixed. Obviously I do have to set it up and test it some more for anything else that's wrong, but the keyboard part is definitely fixed. So it's still charging at 1.5 amps, 19.7 volts. So I think next what I'm gonna do is unplug this and plug it back in several times and just see if it keeps charging how it should. So even though this thing is currently charging and I like to see that, I'm gonna unplug the charger because I wanna see if it's gonna keep charging when I plug it back in. No, it is not. So let's try what we did before. Let's unplug the battery and then plug the battery back in. And now it's charging. Now I know I've got a lot of really smart people that watch my videos. So if you think you know what the problem is, put them down in the comments below. And if I see some good ideas down there that I can try, maybe I'll make an update video. Let me know down in the comments if you wanna see an update video. Also, if you like this type of video, you'll probably like the video where I bought a gaming laptop that was destroyed by a repair shop and I tried to fix it. I'll put the link for that right up on your screen now so you can come hang out with me over there and see if I was able to fix it. If you're looking to upgrade your wallet game, I recommend a Ridge wallet. Go to ridge.com slash tronixfix and use my code tronixfix for 10% off your order. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a good one.